Hi everybody, welcome back to Aro Knits and Pearls. I am your host, Aro of Aro Knits and Pearls. Um, as always, you can find my Instagram, Ravelry Kofi, listed below, as well as any dyers, designers, makers, and just friends that I mentioned in passing. I'll link them all in the description as well, so you don't have to try and like scrub back to where exactly I mentioned them. Okay, so I did kind of see this coming, but after my birthday, now that I don't have that to like distract me from, you know, coping normal things, um, life seems a little heavy. It doesn't help that um, Utah is getting the smoke blown in from the Oregon and California wildfires. So it's very smoky and honestly quite apocalyptic outside. It looks orange, like just like day glow orange constantly. Um, so that's not fun, but I have been knitting and I'm trying to, you know, focus on the good things that I have in my life instead of the things that I'm lacking now. Um, namely my mom, I'm just going to say. But anyway, so I know when I told you guys I was going on a yarn fast that some of you laughed, I know. And to be honest, when I came up with the idea, I laughed too because it sounded dumb. Like I, I thought there's no way, but it has been a week now and I haven't broken my fast except, except, okay. So I, I have acquired some things in the past week, but it didn't break my fast. And I will tell you the rules that I didn't break. Okay. Leading up to that. But the one that I absolutely did break was remember how I received yarn support from La Bienal May for my upcoming design that I'm working on. Well, I left, so my dog, Butters, has a lot of separation anxiety. You guys heard her last week, you know, when she oh woo woo wooed at me. Um, she, she has a lot of PTSD and separation anxiety. And one day I had to leave the house along with Ken. So she was left alone that day and she was not happy about it. So even though she hasn't done this since she was a puppy, she found one skein of La Biana May, took it off of the table and just chomped into it. She didn't. She didn't eat it, she didn't tear it up. She just chomped it in two spots. So I can absolutely not use this yarn unless I want like 5,000 ends woven in. So that was that. And again, I received this as yarn support. So I was not planning on it, obviously, uh, but Hill Country Weavers, uh, my old local yarn shop in Austin, they have become a stockist, an official stockist for La Biana May. So I checked their website and they had one, one skein of this exact color, Sansa. This is Sansa in their silk mohair. And they had one skein left after Butters' you know, disastrous decision. So I ordered it, um, but I did have store credit. I had $14 store credit, so I didn't pay, pay you know, everything. But that, that's the one instance in which I broke my yarn fast over this past week. And I wasn't happy about it, you know, but what can you do? She destroyed it. I need it for my design. Yeah. Anyway, so that was that. <laughs> Oh, butters. Uh, yeah. Anyway, so that was that and other things that I have acquired and I, I have acquired some, but let me, let me, let me explain. So one of them is sweater quantity of another Sailor Moon colorway from Hawari Bazaar, Eternal, obviously. And it's this beautiful minty turquoise neon pinky speckle goodness. Like it's just it's gorgeous obviously you guys know i love mints and i love pinks and it looks like a fairy tale i just i love it so much but i ordered it from her last month or maybe even in june i asked her to dye it for me custom like way back um and she can she confirmed this in her stories so i just want to make it clear i did not break my yarn fast okay don't be in the comments saying you broke your yarn fast it was only to replace this one that Butters destroyed, and that's for my design. So I, technically, I don't consider that breaking my yarn fast, but for accountability purpose, I will say, yes, I did buy one skein of yarn, but I think you guys can agree it was for a really good reason, and it was, it was an act of God. It was an act of Butters, you know? Okay, 
but Karen of Hawari Bazaar did include these lovely stitch markers. Look at this set. She included that as a gift, um, you know, because I ordered it during my birthday month and uh, she wanted to send me these, which was super sweet of her and I'm very grateful. And the colorway is of course stunning. I'm just gonna show it again, even though it's crinkly. Like, oh. It's so pretty. It's so pretty. I think the scene was inspired by when um, Chibiusa, yeah, uh, when little little lady meets, oh, this is Sailor Moon talk, by the way. When little lady meets Pegasus in that like dreamscape world. Yeah, I think that's it. If you don't know Sailor Moon, that's not gonna make any sense. But um, yeah, so that again, I ordered it last month. I didn't break my arm fast. I just received it this month. So that's different. It's different. Okay. <laughs> And then the other thing, I technically didn't break my yarn fast because one of my birthday gifts from my friends was a gift card to Blazing Needles, the, the local yarn shop here in Salt Lake. So I know what you're thinking, Aro, you bought yarn, but here's the thing, here's the thing, here's the thing. The purpose of the yarn fast was so that I could save up for Portland, right? Portland yarn call, assuming it happens with the Delta variant cases on the rise. So it was to save up for Portland, but I received a gift card to a specific store here. I can't exchange it for cash. I can't spend it in Portland. So technically it had to be spent here, which is why when my local yarn store, Blazing Needles, to the, where this gift card is for, when they announced that they're having a special sale, I happened to go and with the purpose of using my gift card. And I'm really glad that I did because, because. So do you guys remember when Julie Hoover teamed up with Shibui Nets for this colorway? There was another colorway as well. I have it here, but this was one of the other ones. And this is the pink color called Vintage Rose. And I've been obsessed with it probably since it came out. So that was like, what, two years ago now? I've loved this color, but I have abstained. I have not bought it yet, except now, because these were 50% off at that special sale at Blazing Needles, 50% off. So I got a sweater quantity and I got uh, a written pattern. This is Antler by Tin Can Knits, Antler Pullover. Sorry, you can't see with the glare. That was dumb, I should have taken it out. But anyway, it was 75% off, so with this and this, it really, it made sense for me to do it, okay? And like I said, it's not like I could exchange it for cash. You know, Blazing Needles wasn't gonna take money out of the till in exchange for that gift card. It had to be spent at Blazing Needles, so I did it. And that's not breaking the yarn fast. I'm not getting any more gift cards to Blazing Needles as far as I know, so I have no intention of breaking quote unquote, breaking my arm fast. I'm just, I'm, I'm really passionate in trying to justify this because you know, I'm an attorney, so I'm trying to fight all these rules. So, but I think you will agree. I think you will agree. I ordered the Hawaii Bazaar last month. Blazing Needles, it was a gift card. It had to be done. This one is a little iffy, but I'm owning up to it because I'm, I'm trying to be decent. So, okay. But if we really think about it, one week for me, one skein, that's, that's pretty good, you guys. Like, come on. Okay, um, yeah, I think I did a great job. Whew. Okay, now I'm gonna go into the whips pile because there's a lot of whips. I am close to finishing a couple and next week is going to be a true crime week. So, you know, you won't get an update. So I'm trying to give you guys an update so that next, the next next week you'll be like, oh my God, Aro, you finished so many, yay and I'll feel great, you'll feel great, it'll be awesome, okay? So without further ado, here are the whips. So you guys remember my Puffy Chunky? This was with three strands of yarn. Um, one of them is Biche Bouche uh, Le Petit Lambs Wool in very light pink. The other is Biche Bouche Silk Mohair, Le Petit Mohair, I think it's called. It's, it's their normal mohair weight. Um, and this is also in very light pink. And the other yarn is Harrisville Daylights in the colorway Bloodshot. So all these held together make this goodness. And I have reached sleeve separation. I have about two inches done on the body and it goes so quickly. 
I'm just, I'm using it kind of as a re relaxing knit, um, just when I get a little overwhelmed with everything going on. It also uses chunky, chunky needles. So I was able to achieve gauge with US 10s, or 10.5, pardon me, it's US 10.5. So that's how I achieved gauge with these three yarns and I'm very happy with it. Um, like, let me get a close up so you guys can see that marling look. You might see some beans hairs in there. <laughs> I'm sorry, his fur is like needles. It just goes straight into the fabric. But anyway, yeah, I expect I'll be done with this very soon, maybe even in two weeks by the time we talk. Um, normally I would say that's absolutely no problem, but given the amount of whips I have, it may be a problem. <laughs> Spoiler alert. Um, okay, then the other one, you guys remember my Summer Blooms by Angeli Devon. This test knit is almost done. I just need a couple more inches on the body before I do ribbing. Oh, let me straighten up that needle. Yeah, but just a couple more inches left. I finished the sleeves and they're cute. I love how this is working up. And I love the hand dyed aspect of the main color as well. There's butter's hair all over this. It's disgusting. I'm so sorry, you guys. Uh, but anyway, again, main color is stress nets. She is back to dying, at least working on her advent. So I'm hoping she will get back on a normal schedule, dyeing regular yarn that I can buy then. And after my fast, after my fast, sorry. I'm trying to catch myself when I get into the, oh yeah, I'll buy that phase or thought process. So thank you guys for keeping me honest. I'm trying to catch myself. Okay, but yeah, so Angelie Devon, I expect I, I think I'll actually finish this today. Um, just because I've been, I got kind of in a groove about it last night, so I'm very excited. Um, then you guys remember my other whip that I have progress on. So I have a bunch of other whips, but I'm not showing those to you guys because I don't have a lot of progress done on them. Um, and I just, I don't want to show you guys the same old thing. But um, this is my Blueberry Pie, you will recall, by Soft Power Knits. The test is over. I don't have a hard release day yet. I have to check my yarn pond account to see if she has an update, but I am making progress on it because I finished one sleeve. Oh, I went back and ripped out the body because I realized it was just too short for me for what I liked. So I added more to the body, both in the moss stitch and then in the ribbing. I just added probably like full three inches. I added three inches. Um, I've started on the sleeve. The second sleeve, you can see the cable detailing continuing, but yeah, this works up not as slow as you might think with the moss stitch. Um, I think I might finish this probably by Wednesday. Yeah, yeah, I think I'll finish this uh, this week as well. So that's good progress. I'm happy about that. Yeah, I think it's very realistic that by the next time I see you guys, I might have one, two, three finished projects. Maybe, maybe four. Maybe. I'm not sure. Um, the other one, I am so behind on this test knit. It's not even funny. It makes me actually quite frustrated with myself because I shouldn't have put it off for so long, but this is my Clio cardigan. It's in progress. I reached sleeve separation. I am getting to the button, the first of the buttonholes. I actually did get a set of buttons for it. Oh, I left them over there. I'm not gonna get it now, but um, I love this color. It really is stunning, except wait, did I skip a stitch here? Nope, I did not. Everything's fine. Um, again, this is two colors held together in mohair and it combines together to create this lovely, delicate, soft peach pink and um, very excited about it. I really wish I hadn't put it off for so long because there was no need for it. And, but no use crying over spilled milk. And you know, I didn't drop the stitch. What I did was I didn't, did I get the two strands of my way? I'm not going to look at that now. I'm sorry, you guys. <sighs> yeah, but um, I will update you on the progress of that. I won't have that done by the next time I see you in two weeks. I just won't. You might see me working on it during my true crime knit night. Who knows? Um, I'm not sure what I'll be working on that during that. But for those of you who don't like true crime and don't want to just watch me muted, I'll see you in two weeks about that. 
but I did briefly want to talk about a couple things just in terms of knitting and what I've been going through. Um, so I've been super stressed at work. I won't really go into it. It's pretty sensitive stuff, so I can't go into it, but um, work has been stressful and uh, that's part of why I haven't been knitting as much during the week, like even after work than I normally would. You know, I'm just, I can't stop thinking about it. So when I do knit, I kind of knit like forcefully and it makes me do something called deviation. So there's ulnar or radi radial deviation, depending on which direction your wrist kind of like flips. And the best position for your wrist when you're knitting is just a neutral position. And you can watch the videos that Andrea Alu knits, who is a physical therapist. She has a ton of wellness reels and she'll go into it. But essentially I was doing it too forcefully and doing weird angles with my new hand and wrist and it was causing me pain. I mentioned it to you guys last week and I did receive a, uh, a wrist guard, essentially, um, brace, wrist brace. Um, Andrea recommended it to me, it's the one she uses and I started using it and I, I won't put it on just because the sound of the Velcro is really bracing to me, at least when I'm on video. So I will link it for you guys if you want to take a look. I got mine off of Amazon. Um, so far when I've used it, it has really helped. It won't like stop you from moving at all, but it will kind of serve as a reminder like, oh, you're trying to bend too hard and it will kind of prevent the extreme motions and just make you think about your wrist position a little bit more. And it's definitely helped prevent some of the pain that I was experiencing as well as stretching and resting. That's been really great for me. So, you know, I know we all want to make as fast as possible just because there's so much yarn, so many beautiful patterns out there. Like, trust me, I know, you guys know I know. Um, but it really is important to take care of yourselves because we don't just wanna make beautiful, we don't just wanna make fast, we wanna make for as long as we can, right? Um, I always joke to people that I'm here for a good time, not a long time, um, but if we are here for a good time, you know, if it does turn out that I'm here for a long time, I don't wanna find out that I can't make later on because that would be really sad, <laughs> like really sad. So take care of yourselves, give yourself the rest you need, don't beat yourself up about it, do the stretches. Andrea's videos are amazing. Um, I'll, again, I'll link the wrist brace if you guys are having similar issues, but I think it's so important to take the rest you need, listen to your body. Don't just push through pain because that pain is an indicator of something more serious sometimes. So yeah, sorry, that's me lecturing you guys. That's mama RO mode. Um, the second thing I wanna talk to you guys, so I don't, want to uh, milk my mother's passing in any way. Um, but it's definitely something that weighs really heavily on me like constantly. And um, last year, so she was the one who taught me to knit. I told you guys that uh, she was the one who taught me to knit when I was a kid. And last year I convinced her to knit with me this same project that I'm wearing. It was a test knit at the time. I think it was called um, Smokestack uh, by Jessica McDonald, Jessica McDonald. And again, I'll link it. Um, I'll link the Ravelry of this pattern. And I think she has her own website as well. So I'll link that for those of you who don't find Ravelry accessible still. Um, but she, she saw mine and she wanted to make the same. And uh, we, we went to a yarn store once together in, uh, Rogers, Arkansas, which is a kind of like a suburb of Fayetteville. And she fell in love with this one skein. She fell in love with this skein. I think it's Fool's Gold in Hedgehog, uh, Hedgehog Fiber Sock. And um, she wanted to get it, but she didn't know what she would make with it. And after a while, I even though I offered to buy it, she never let me buy things. Um, it's just one of those like Korean things where it, so, some elders think it's uh, rude to allow a younger person to buy something for you. Some elders expect it. My mother was definitely of the former. She would never let me spend money on her except at Christmas. And that's when I would go all out. But anyway, 
Um, so she really loved it, but she didn't know what she wanted with it. And she was just, just like, whatever, um, I'm not going to get it. I'm not going to spend money on it. Um, so when I returned to Austin, I bought a fade of hedgehog colors to make her a faded sweater. And then when I went to live with her for a while during the pandemic, she, um, this was the fade, by the way, at least four of the colors, there's a fifth one. But um, when I went to live with her in the pandemic, she was like, I'm so bored these days, I have nothing to do. So how about you teach me to knit that sweater you're making or you already made. So I wrote it out for her in Korean, um, just, nothing fancy just you know knit this many rows alternate by this color i made like a chart that she could follow depending on which color and this is how far she got um this is how far she got it she got to the third color that you can kind of see it's coming in here but she got to the third color and um she just kind of stopped working on it my mom, uh, she learned, she taught me to knit, but she didn't like knitting very much herself. She, she liked big things. She couldn't do the constant slow movement, small movements, you know, like one individual stitch. She liked big things. Um, it was just her personality. So she gave it to me and I took it with me when I moved to Utah last year and I was going to finish it for her. Uh, of course, she passed before I saw her again. So I've just had this, um, you can see it's all crumpled up because it was sitting in a project bag for many months. And I really struggled with what I wanted to do with it because, you know, it's nice yarn, it's expensive yarn. And it, she was holding it with mohair, which is what the pattern it calls for. Um, but I wanted to reclaim the yarn and make like a blanket I thought maybe if I have kids of my own someday that it would be nice if they had colors that their grandma would have liked. Um, sorry. Um, but I couldn't bring myself to um, rip out the stitches that she had made and I'm still kind of struggling with it. I did take it off of the needles. So that's, that's one big step for me. Um, because you guys know I, I use interchangeables and I just, I kept buying interchangeable tips and cords instead of taking it off of projects in progress. So that's, that. Uh, people have asked me that before, like do you leave things on needles or just the cords or on waist yarn? I just leave it on the needles just because I'm lazy. Um, so yeah, I, I did reclaim the needles for that, which is great because I really needed them. Um, but I, I just, trying to still process, you know, moving on. Um, yeah, grief sucks. I know in the comments, all of you guys have been so supportive and incredible. Um, grief is hard, you know? Um, so I may not rip out just yet, um, but I think I will. It's just one of those things that I'm gearing myself up for emotionally. Sorry, I didn't think this was gonna be a crying episode. <laughs> Ooh, okay, yes, sorry about that. Um, just going to think about the pretty yarn in my life and I luckily I have so much, so much yarn, um, which really is great that I am participating in this yarn fast and you know, other than that one skein, I haven't broken it. So I, I have exceeded my expectations. I hope I've exceeded y'all's expectations. Um, yeah, so keep following me to see the progress of how far I descend into madness because I can't buy yarn. <laughs> um, except for that one skein, just one skein, you guys, give me that. Um, and it was, okay, so I'm going into defensive mode again. It's fine, it's fine, anyway. Thank you for stopping in. I'm sorry I started crying unexpectedly. I thought I was like a-okay when I was like, oh yeah, I'll talk about mom's sweater because I took it off the needles right before I started. So I was like, I'm emotionally okay, I got this. And then it kind of came to me all at once. So I'm sorry about that. Um, 
like I said, next week will be a true crime episode, but the week after that, I'm hoping I will have many finished objects to show you guys, fingers crossed. Um, in the meantime, take care of yourselves, take care of each other. If you are able, you know, just reach out to your mom as a favor to me. Um, that would be nice. Okay, um, I love you guys. I will see you next time. And please knit safely. And bye.